The sixth season of Rick and Morty is concluded. I really enjoyed this season. A lot of characters underwent crazy development and overall I am very satisfied with the season. But let's be honest, the most interesting part of the season was the main villain of it, Rick Prime. He was the main topic of the first and final episodes of the season. While the final episode did not really give him as much screen time as the pilots did, it still gave us several interesting bits of information about him and today I want to talk about it. But before starting, I want to ask you all to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. I hope you all have a great day. Now let's start the video. This episode was very weird. A very important plot point was revealed when Morty discovers that Rick has been working in his lab by himself since their argument in the previous episode. To hide this decision from Morty and the rest of the Smith family, Rick instead created a robot clone of himself to take his place. Somewhat tragically, the robot was programmed to be nicer and 22% more thoughtful than the regular Rick, but also to die if he revealed his metallic nature, resigning him to a cruel existence. Rick's reasoning for replacing himself with the robot appears to be twofold. On one hand, he has a complicated perception of his need to continue hunting the version of himself who killed his wife, considering it both vital and approaching it with some element of shame. On the other hand, Rick also appears to have replaced himself to some degree because he couldn't handle being emotionally vulnerable and close to his family, since in Rick and Morty Season 6, Episode 10, he tells Morty, that's what happens when you let people in and they stop respecting you. They touch your shit, they screw things up, they kill your fucking family. Go ahead, trust them. You're gonna learn this fucking thing. In this scene, he says something very interesting. This sentence makes me think that Rick C-137 knew Rick Prime before their supposed first meeting. While the season 3 premiere made it seem like they didn't know each other at all till that moment, that backstory sequence wasn't entirely accurate in the first place. And when we see Rick's backstory at the end of the fifth season, we don't hear anything the two Ricks are saying in the garage. It's possible their discussion was different than what we saw in season 3, allowing for the idea that they already knew each other. The only real conversation that we are sure they had was about Rick's rejection of something from Prime. Excuse me? Bro, Ricks don't pass on this. We aren't even sure what they're talking about. At first, it is evident that their conversation must be about the portal gun, just like in the fabricated backstory from the third season, but when you think about it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Why is it important for Rick Prime that Rick C-137 invents the portal gun? He already has the portal gun. There are some universes where Rick doesn't discover the portal gun. I can see him going to those and giving them the technology. In fact, one can argue that if Rick Prime didn't go and kill C-137's family, C-137 would never have discovered the portal gun. Gun. But again I ask, why is it important for that particular Rick to invent the portal gun? Rick Prime already had the technology in his universe, but I guess Rick Prime wasn't trying to get our Rick to invent the portal gun, he was trying to get to him. In the backstory of Rick Sanchez, we could see that one of the Ricks, which was killed by our Rick, had a red string conspiracy board of numerous Ricks around a tapestry of what would become the Citadel of Rick's insignia. Meaning, before the Citadel was created, there was most likely a cult of Ricks promoting similar ideas of superior and the Rick who was killed by our Rick was trying to organize all of the Ricks who were parts of that cult in the hopes of finding their leader, which from what we know was most likely Prime. This is later backed up by Prime saying that he doesn't team up anymore, which means that this cult is no longer active, and maybe Prime was trying to get our Rick to join his cult, which was denied by Rick C-137. I think upon Rick C-137 denying Rick Prime's offer, he took it as I'm a better person than that, rejecting Rick Prime's offer to join him and leaving immediately. So Rick Prime being as evil as he is perceived to be, kills Diane and Beth. Hell, come to think of it, maybe his invention was to trap our Rick in a reality where his wife and child are dead knowing that he doesn't have portal technology. Or maybe the reason is much simpler. For example, maybe he goes to every universe to give them or make them invent that portal gun. Because he wants every version of himself to be the smartest in the universe, even if it means cheating other Ricks to have a portal gun so they can study it and learn how to make it. But personally, I prefer the first theory since it makes more sense in my opinion. Them having history before that accident would also explain why Rick Prime took our Rick's rejection that badly. Another interesting thing about Rick Prime is how does Rick Prime hide so effectively without a Morty to mask his genius waves with Morty waves? In the 10th episode of the first season, we learn that the main reason why Ricks use Mortys as partners is to hide their brain waves since Morty's stupidity balances Rick's intelligence. But we can see that Rick Prime works alone. We haven't seen any Morty around him, so how does he manage to do that? 
I've got several theories on it. I'm sure most of you remember the microverse from the sixth episode of the second season. It was an artificial microscopic universe that exists inside of the battery, inside of Rick's space cruiser. It is a universe filled with a species of aliens who have formed a regular, everyday society. When the aliens work, they generate a power source that charges the battery for Rick's space cruiser and occasionally his phone. Most likely, the planets in this universe have been reduced to the size of the bacterial world. Maybe Rick Prime has created something like that. A little pocket dimension where Mortys are tortured regularly, which enables him to hide himself from other Ricks and the government. Or maybe it could be that he's so intelligent that he's found another way to mask his trail. He might have designed the suit that he wears to constantly send out complimentary brainwaves so no Morty is required. This might also explain his complete confidence in what he does. That alone is cause for concern. Another interesting thing about Rick Prime is his ability to be at several different locations at the same time. So as we all know, in the first episode of the sixth season, our Rick finds Rick Prime's supposed location and after a couple of booby traps he managed to find a device which apparently reveals his location. Obviously, location in this show is fluid in that he could be in any number of dimensions, so without getting into the whole infinite universes discussion and overcomplicating it, we can probably assume that Rick's tracker likely spanned the central finite curve or a set number of universes. We can see on the screen that it scans a Milky Way looking object with a singularity in its center, as well as multiple other galaxies in the background. So either Rick is scanning the entire universe, which, although it's a generic space graphic that shrinks any singularity galaxy to the size of a small black hole, looks similar to the place Evil Morty escapes to, or he's got the scanner localized onto our galaxy and the others in picture are just in the background. Rick says something interesting later to Morty regarding all this. Wow, are those all the places Rick Prime could be? I wish, Morty. It's all the places he is. Oh, what could geez, this mean? Welcome. Well, based on things that have occurred on the show, it could mean that these dots on the map represent multiple copies of Rick Prime, either decoys or real intelligent full copies all working toward the same goal. Obviously, it could be a bunch of different Ricks who are more similar to the Prime or carbon copies from other universes. Obviously, the infinite universe thing makes this possible, but for the canon continuation of the story, it doesn't make sense to have more than one Rick Prime, like having more than one Rickest Rick or C-137 Rick. The Rick Prime we've seen in episode 1 is a clone. Heck, the real Rick Prime may have cloned himself numerous times and put a tracker in each one of them, hence the radar showing so many red dots. He's doing the exact opposite of Evil Morty. Instead of hiding and kidnapping Mortys from universe to universe, Rick Prime showed hundreds of himself so no one knows who the real Rick Prime is. Kind of like that one episode in season 5 where the Smith family realized their decoys. If Rick can create a robot that resembled himself so much while being so self-aware, then Rick Prime can probably do the same but with literal flesh instead of metal and wires. A lot of people introduce the idea of time travel, and that's how Rick Prime is most likely at several places at the same time. However, the show has made it abundantly clear that time travel makes for boring plots. That was the whole point of the snake time travel episode. So right now, the only explanation that I can think of is that he is using his decoys. It creates a situation where the longer our Rick takes to fill off Rick Primes, the more of them there are, as his universe versus branch off into more and more alternative realities. To me, this fits Rick's seemingly unwinnable fight and his multiversal nihilism. Anyway, I guess this is all for today. What do you think about Rick Prime and his backstory with our Rick? Why did he kill Beth and Diane? How is he hiding without Morty and how does he exist in several places at the same time? Let me know in the comments, like this video and subscribe to this channel for more. Lonnie Brock's out. Bye.